Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Social Cheat She, also known as Carly. And today we're gonna do a November monthly reset. So I'm really excited about this. I am in the best mood, so that's awesome. I'm in the best mood and I'm excited to just get started. So we're gonna do a few different things today, but first we are going to start with last month's goals. And I'm just gonna be very honest with you guys. I didn't really accomplish any of them and that just happens sometimes but I still did so much in October so I'm gonna go over the goals that I have for October and then I'm actually going to let you know what all I did in October because I kind of went a different route than what I originally planned so let's just talk about it okay the first goal that I put for October was to get monetized on YouTube we are not yet monetized on YouTube but we are over halfway there, so I'm really excited to see that. I'm excited to make this happen. I'm definitely going to roll that goal over into November and really hope we can make it happen in November. I am posting a lot more now. I'm not surprised I didn't get monetized because I kind of just stopped posting because I still don't have Wi-Fi, but I'm done letting that excuse get in the way again. So I've just been posting and figuring, I mean, I've just been recording now, editing and posting and figuring things out. So I've been a lot more active on YouTube and I plan to. I'm really enjoying creating content on YouTube and it's not going to stop me time soon. So I'm a lot more consistent now. So because of that, I do think we can achieve this goal in November. It's still, I'm still doing really good. I mean, I've only been on YouTube for a few months, so it's not bad that I'm already over halfway to be monetized. So I'm still proud of myself. But yeah, we didn't hit that goal, but we're going to hit it in November. I can just feel it. I, I, I really honestly believe that we're going to hit it before the end of the year. Okay, the next goal was to hit 20,000 on TikTok. Let me actually see where we're at. Let me pull up my TikTok. We are at 18.8 thousand followers. So that's not bad. We definitely didn't hit the goal, though, of over 20,000 followers. But that's okay. I definitely need to get better at being more consistent on TikTok as well. But I'm just, I'm just so busy, but I need to make it more of a priority because, you know, obviously making sure I'm active on my social platforms does really help me in terms of landing clients and selling my services and all that stuff. But yeah, so we're at 18.8 thousand followers on TikTok. If you guys want to like go support me and give me a follow, I do post a lot of awesome info on TikTok. My TikTok name is the same as YouTube. It's Social Cheat Sheet. So if you go look up Social Cheat Sheet, I'd appreciate a follow. I give a lot of awesome free tips on TikTok as well, just shorter form content. And I go live quite often on TikTok. So I think you guys would really enjoy those lives. Very informative. I answer a lot of questions. Okay, my next goal was to hit four long-term clients. So when I talk, so if you're new here, you might not know what I'm talking about. So when I say to hit four, long-term clients, I mean UGC clients or content creation clients. So usually these are clients that I'm working with on a monthly basis. They'll pay me a monthly retainer to work with them. So I didn't hit four monthly clients, but I do have two. So I actually got one new client for a monthly retainer, which is really exciting. I'm really excited to work with them. They're amazing. It's two founders of a company. I don't really want to go into too much detail about it right now, but I'm really excited to work with them. So that'll be awesome. And I also have another client that I work with on a monthly basis as well. I haven't landed two more like I wanted to, but I've been having meetings. I've been having conversations. I have talked to three other people that were looking for monthly content. If I would have landed them all, it would have been five. So that would have been awesome. So I know we're, st we're getting closer. We're doing good. We're still landing meetings. So I know I'll end up landing four clients as long as I keep trying. Out of the three other people that I've had conversations with, I know the one I for sure didn't land, but the other two are still up in the air. I mean, it doesn't look too good to me right now because I haven't landed them yet, but I've talked to them. They have shown a lot of interest. So I'm still kind of waiting on that because sometimes I can get really surprised and not land something right away. And then later on, they'll be like, okay, let's do it. Let's work together. So I'm still waiting. I mean, that's not out the door until they tell me no. And one of the clients specifically that I'm waiting to see if I can end up landing is big money. So that's really exciting. When I say big money, I mean, you know, in the thousands. With that said, even though I didn't land for long-term clients, I worked with a bunch of different clients this month for UGC and content creation. So it was still a good month. I was still very busy. I still had a pretty booked schedule. I still created a lot of content this month. I don't know how many brands I actually worked with, but quite a few. I don't only work with people on a monthly basis. I just prefer to do it that way. It's a lot easier for me and I like to be able to build those relationships so we can keep creating awesome content together and act and, you know, obviously as we grow together and we test things out, we learn to see what actually works, what doesn't work. And I'm able to be able to have a really great partnership with them and they're able to end up getting awesome creatives because, you know, we already went through the whole process and the steps. So now we know what works and what doesn't work. So even if I'm not working with someone on a monthly basis, that doesn't mean that I'm not having other clients. So I have clients that 
I once in a great while will only make one video for them. It doesn't happen that often. I usually work with people that I do bundles for, but sometimes I do have a person that I'll make one video for. So for example, Bellamy, when I work for Bellamy, I only made, sorry, my phone keeps going off. So when I work for Bellamy, I only made one video for them. But other people that I'm working with right now, I actually make, con oh, you know what? I lied to you guys. I have three clients. What am I talking about? I, have I totally just lied to you guys. I have three monthly clients. I do. I don't know why I'm saying that I only have two. I actually have three. Oh my gosh, I do. So if I landed one more client, that would mean I would have hit my four, my four client goal. Oh, I didn't realize that because the reason why I get the, the reason why I like I guess lied but didn't mean to lie was because before when I would say monthly clients, I was meeting clients that I was creating like 30 pieces of content for in a month. But now I'm working with people on a monthly basis where I'm not creating 30 pieces of content for them. I might only be creating a few pieces of content for them but they want to continuously work together every month. So it's not like a one-off client. So I do technically actually have three of those clients where I'm creating content for them every single month, but I don't have three clients that I'm creating content for every single day. With that said, I have other clients I've worked with who I'll create bundles for. And when I say bundles, I mean like three videos, five videos, six videos, and so on. So those are my bundle deals and those are the other ones I prefer to do. I prefer to do monthly long content or bundle deals. This way they're getting more bang for their buck because I obviously give them a deal if they purchase bundles from me and I'm getting a higher amount of money. So it works out for both of us. Make sure you're offering bundle deals and monthly content. I'm telling you, you wanna do it this way, thank me later. It's way better to work with people on a monthly basis or on bundles than just doing a ton of one-off videos. It's way easier this way and it's more fun and enjoyable and you don't get burnt out as easily, in my opinion. Uh, so even though I don't have a bunch of long-term clients right now, I was still able to create a bunch of content. I still felt very productive this month and got a lot of done and I made a lot of videos. I got to meet a lot more people. I got to have some more awesome meetings that you know were very informative and taught me a lot of things. And every time I get on a meeting, you know, it makes me more confident. So even though I don't always land all my meetings, it's still nice to have them because I said every time I have them, I learn something new and I get more confident and I'm more prepared for the next meeting. Another thing that I wanted to mention on here that I didn't make a goal, but I think I'm gonna make this more of a goal for next month, is I also landed um, quite a few one-on-one -on -one coaching calls this month, which, which was really cool. I love being able to do those one-on-one -on -one coaching calls for you guys. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. Usually I do one-on-one -on -one coaching calls for other people that are aspiring to be UGC creators or are already a UGC creator, but you know want to learn more or have specific questions for me or for content creators. But I just started recently doing them for actual businesses as well. So like, I'll, so I actually offer one-on-one -on -one coaching calls or one-on-one -on -one consultations, I should say, with business owners. So that's been a lot of fun for me to do as well. So I wanna do more of those next month. So I wanna make sure to make that one of my new goals for November is to book some more consultation calls. I'm actually really good at it. I'm really, really good at going and giving audits and looking at their competitors, you know, and do competitive research and coming up with a bunch of content ideas for them, basically giving them like a whole new social media strategy for TikTok specifically. I'm really good at that and I wanna do more of it. Every time I do this, brands are so freaking like pleasantly surprised and they couldn't be more happy. So I should get more into that. My next goal, which I actually did do, was to create my own affiliate program. I'll definitely get more into that later on, but just so you guys know, I do have my own affiliate program now. If you're interested in it, I'll go ahead and put it in the description for you guys. So you can just go ahead and click on the link and sign up for it if you want to. But basically it's an affiliate program for my UGC cheat sheet that I sell because I'm just so busy creating UGC content for my clients. I just don't have time to market my UGC cheat sheet anymore. I love my UGC cheat sheet. It has brought a lot of people success and I don't wanna stop selling it because it really is so helpful. I've helped a lot of people make a lot of money and that's amazing to me and I wanna keep having that but I just don't have time to market it myself. I have time to be able to text everyone back. So my UGC cheat sheet it includes my phone number. So. You can text me anytime you want to any day and I'll respond to you that way. You never have to go without having any questions answered. It's kind of like I'm holding your hand the whole time if you want me to. That way you're never in the dark. That way you can't really fail if you're willing to do everything the cheat sheet says and you're willing to ask me questions, you can't fail. So I have time to still be able to text everyone back and be able to do everything that way. But I don't have time 
as much time as they used to have to go out and actually market the UGC cheat sheet. So anyways, I created my own affiliate program and for every UGC cheat sheet that you're able to sell, you get $50. So the UGC cheat sheet is only $150, but everyone you sell, you'll get $50 for. So that can add up really fast if you've ever been into affiliate marketing, you're good at affiliate marketing, or you're interested in getting started because most affiliate programs are really, really low in price. Like they're really, really low in how much money you get. So a lot of affiliate programs, you only get like a few percents. You might get $3, you might get 50 cents, you might get a few bucks, five, $10. There's not a whole lot of affiliate programs that will give you $50 for every sale unless it's like a super high ticket item. So if the item is like, you know, over a thousand dollars, mine's only $150 for people to buy it. And if you're able to sell it to people, you get $50 every time. So it really adds up. So anyways, you don't have to buy it to sell it by the way, you can just sell it. Awesome deal. I will have it in my description for you to go ahead and click on it. There's only a limited amount of spots. So if you do want to do this, I would sign up soon because like I said, I am paying to only have a certain amount of spots. Maybe in the future, I'll make more spots available if there's success in this. The only reason I don't have more spots available is because I do have to pay for this. So I just have it at a certain amount of people that can sign up for it. So if you're interested in it, go sign up for it soon and comment down below if you sign up for it. I'd love to know everyone that's actually joining my affiliate program. It would be awesome. Win-win. You get 50 bucks every time you sell it and I get money as well. So it's an awesome win-win so I can focus on my other parts of my business. The next thing on my goals was to get organized and build systems. I would say I did that kind of i'm always that's always a work in progress but i did build a notion i did build a notion board to kind of help me with my social cheat sheet side of things so maybe i'll put a clip in the video so you guys can actually see my notion board and how i use it or maybe i'll make a separate video letting you guys know exactly how i use my notion board comment down below if you want me to make a whole video about how i created my notion board and how i use it to stay organized in my business because there's a lot of things in my business there's obviously my goals for my business and then there's my ugc my ugc cheat sheet side of the things and like my services so like my one-on-one -on -one calls my ugc cheat sheet you know all that stuff and then there's you know my actual clients that i create ugc content for and content creation for and then there's other things i want to do in my business like building my own agency which is exciting um i'll tell you guys more about that later on i'm gonna kind of keep that quiet for right now but yeah it's just a little sneak peek into my future life I am going to be having my own agency eventually. I'm really excited about that because I've been able to build an awesome community full of people who trust me and I want to be that agency that is just the best and that you know all you UGC creators know that you are safe with, you know you can trust, you know won't screw you over at all. Like, I'm really excited for that, but that's gonna be in the future. My next goal was to make $15,000. That did not happen. That did not happen, but it's going to happen. I will make $15,000 in a month. I will do that. It's gonna happen, it's coming, I know it's coming, hasn't happened yet. <laughs> My highest month I've ever had was $13,800. So I know it's possible, I know it's possible. I just gotta wait and make it happen. Okay, the last goal that I had was to create a digital product. I started to do, uh, I tried creating like other digital products, but I just, I didn't get into it, so that hasn't happened yet. I still want to come out with a digital product that I love and I'm passionate about and I want to be able to sell, but that hasn't happened yet. I don't want to just pick something to pick something. I like to do things I'm actually passionate about. So that hasn't happened yet, but I might add that to my November goals. Okay, so now let's actually make our goals for November. Okay, I have you guys super zoomed in and then we'll go over them afterwards. Okay guys, hopefully you're able to see everything I wrote on my computer. I tried to have you super zoomed in so you could see the goals, but I just wanna kinda of go over them really quickly with you. So for November goals, I put to get monetized on YouTube. Like I, like I said earlier, I'm already over halfway there. I would love to get monetized in November, if not in December, but I really wanna to aim to have it monetized in November. And I obviously wanna be able to build my subscribers and build my video views too, but that kinda of all just goes together like hand in hand. So I just put get monetized on YouTube. And then I want to hit 20,000 followers on TikTok. We're really close to that. I'm hoping I can actually hit a lot higher than 20,000. But I just want to give myself realistic goals to be able to hit, you know, in November so I can, you know, be proud of myself and 
if, when I'm able to hit things, it makes me feel, you know, more confident and know that I can do things so I can strive to hit bigger goals rather than making too many goals that are too far out of my reach. Because then when I don't hit them, then I can sometimes feel like a failure and that doesn't really push me to want to do better. It should, but it doesn't. Me Seeing that I'm able to succeed makes helps push me to succeed even further. Does that make sense? Is anyone else like that? So you'll see that I initially put four long-term clients, but I changed it to five long-term clients because I want to be able to have two of those um, long-term clients to be like monthly clients. What I mean by that is I want it to be two like content creation clients or UGC clients that are having me post 20 to 30 times a month. That way I'm able to be making at least two to three grand from that, from those clients a piece. So that would be like four to six grand total for those two clients. Does that make sense? So I want to, so I already have, I already have like technically Wait, I said, what were the three earlier I said? Oh yeah, yeah, duh. Okay, so I already technically have like three monthly clients, but like I said earlier, those aren't clients that I'm posting to 20, 30 times a month for. Those are clients that like one, I post six times a month for, the other one I post four times a month for right now, but that could go up next month. And then my third one, is one that I'll be posting 15 times a month that we do want to make it to 30 times a month, but they have to wait till they make more money to be able to pay me more for me to be able to make them 30 pieces of content a month. So we're starting at 15 and that'll be $1,500 for me. So yeah, we technically already have three, but I want to have five and I want two of those to be clients that I can create, you know, everyday content for so I can make more money from them. I ideally would be liking, you know, to be able to be making majority of my money from those long-term clients. So I would ideally like to try to see if I could get to, like, I don't know, like I, I, I would like in a perfect world, I would love to be making like ten thousand dollars from working with long-term clients. That would be awesome, but I don't know. So I'm just trying like this and see what happens. I honestly believe if I tried harder and pushed myself harder. I could land a lot more long-term clients. I just honestly, I don't try hard enough. I know I don't. I could, if I if I were to make myself spend an hour to two hours every single day, just really like hustling and like really looking for long-term clients and sending out like hundreds of pitches a day, I know I could land them. I don't do that though. I need to want it more. And I do, I am starting to want it more now. So I definitely want to try harder with that this month. Maybe I can make a video like actually showing you, oh my gosh, you know what? Maybe I'll make a video recording myself doing this and showing you guys the process of me pitching like you know like 50 brands a day you know for like a week straight and see what happens see if i land any clients and i could actually record the whole process and show you guys this okay so the next one was to find good affiliates for affiliate program so i do have my own affiliate program like i mentioned earlier so i just want to see if i can go and like actually source some like known like like really known good affiliates i don't know if i can or not i want to try to find some people that have already made quite a bit of money doing affiliate marketing and see if i can get them to want to sell my you know ugc cheat sheet for me that way i can you know speed up making more money does that make sense so i want to try to see if i can get some people that are really good at affiliate marketing to want to market my ugc cheat sheet for me that way i can just start bringing in that other source of income you know and quicker while other people that are getting into this can just you know do it at a slower pace does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Okay, and then I also put, I wanna make more Stan affiliate income. So I actually am a person that purchased Stan, so I actually use Stan myself. A Stan store is what I mean when I say Stan. So I have a Stan store. I pay for that every single month. I think I pay like thirty something dollars every single month to have my own stand store, and I use that to sell my services. So to sell my UGC cheat sheet, to sell my one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, to sell my UGC audits and portfolio audits, all that stuff. So I have a stand store for that that I actually use. But every time someone signs up for their own stand store using my referral code or using my yeah my referral code, so when you go to my so when you go to my stand store, you can use like my referral code, and then you'll get a percent off, and then I will get what is it, like $6? You get $6 for every person that, you know, signs up for a stand store using your referral code or however that works. So I don't ever market that ever. So I'll, I've been saying this, but I haven't done anything with it. I want to start marketing that a little bit more to get a little bit extra affiliate income. Like I said, it's six bucks for every person. So it's not really much at all, but it adds up to, you know, $6 adds up. If I can get it to a few hundred dollars every month, you know, that's money to pay my groceries, you know, to help pay towards a bill, to maybe pay for one of my, you know, impulsive shopping sprees or shopping purchases. 
Amazon purchases, you know, anything like that. It's nice to have the extra money. Same thing with Instagram Reels. I didn't post that on here, but I'm still trying to make it a habit to post more Instagram Reels because I do get paid for Instagram Reels. Not much money at all. Last month I got $100, which still $100 is better than nothing though. 100 bucks, like I said, helps pay for like half my groceries, helps pay for an impulsive purchase, something I might see on Amazon I want. So it's still nice to have. So if I can build up, you know, a little bit of Instagram Reel income with some affiliate income for my stand store it just helps pay for some extra things so i'm just trying to also work on those those are not like my main things to work on because they're not my main source of income at all but it's nice to build them because it's a little bit of extra money and it doesn't hurt to have okay and then i put make fifteen thousand dollars this is always on my goals every single month i don't know if i'll be able to hit that this month i really need to sit down and think what do i actually realistically need to do to hit fifteen thousand a month that's what I need to do and then start going after each thing. So I need to like make a list saying all the things I need to actually do to make 15,000 a month and then write down each step for each of those things to make each of those things happen to be able to realistically make 15,000 a month. I can't just say I want to make 15,000 a month and not do any of the steps it takes to make it happen and big, oh, well, let's just hope it happens. I need to actually plan it out. So that's what I'm going to that's what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll do that here in a little bit. Maybe I'll do that today is actually plan out how to make 15,000 a month. But yeah. So that's a big goal of mine. When I when that happens, oh my gosh, I am going to be celebrating. It's gonna be a whole ordeal when that finally happens. Comment down below if you're rooting for me and are hoping I make fifteen thousand dollars a month because I need all of the good vibes that I can get. Okay, my next thing is to get a full business plan in place for my social cheat sheet agency that I really want to launch. I'm really hoping that I can launch my agency in January. So I'm thinking like my whole idea for this is it's a new year, a new start, new beginning. So I think it'd be awesome to be able to start that new journey of mine like at the beginning of next year. That gives me like two months to really go in hard and really plan and figure everything out. I don't know if it's gonna happen like that, but that's what I'm planning. So I need to write out a whole like business plan to make sure I do everything the right way and make sure I have everything written down that I need to know and all that in place. So that's a lot of stuff to even like talk about right now, but that's another big goal of mine. And then, I'm, and then I want to see if I can actually start finding an agency team. I'm really nervous about that. Like finding like the perfect team for my agency. But that's something that I need to start looking more into. I just need to look more into that and see if I want to start building that team up. I'm not sure. I'm a little iffy on that one, but we'll see. Oh yeah. And then I want to get my LLC. This is something I've been thinking about. I do think since I want to end up going the agency route and have an agency, Plus, I like selling multiple things. And since I like to have multiple streams of income, I think it would be smart to get an LLC. So I'm going to look into that. And I think for November, I'd like to go and get my LLC. By the way, to have an LLC, it does cost money. Depending where you live, I think it's like three to 500 bucks a year, every single year. So I wouldn't suggest you to get an LLC until you are making money in your business because you do have to pay for this every year. But once you do start making money and you're like having multiple streams of income and you want to end up hiring people, then you should probably get your LLC. I know there's also an S Corp, so I might see like which one is better for me. I'm not really sure. I don't really know much about S Corps. So I'm going to either get my LLC or maybe an S Corp. Not quite entirely sure yet. <laughs> And then this one is not a main priority at all, but I did put to create a digital product. I have been wanting to create a digital product for some passive income. I love passive income. It's the best income you can possibly have. So I want to see about creating a digital product. Not the top of my list. I'm not even quite sure what I want to do. Like maybe my Notion board. Would you guys be interested in buying my Notion board? Well, I probably should show it to you first, right? Like I said, I'm thinking I'm going to put a clip in this video showing you with my Notion board. Either I'll post it right now or I'll put it earlier in the video like I stated earlier. And then yes, let me know down below. Should I sell my Notion board? And if so, for how much? Okay, and then I want to post on YouTube at least twice a week. So I want to like actually post new videos twice a week, every week. That is another goal of mine. I totally think it's possible. Like now that I've been taking YouTube more serious and I've been recording a lot, I really enjoy it. It's not that hard to sit down and actually record from the camera and then spend time editing because I actually enjoy editing as well. So I think it's definitely possible for me to do that, to push myself and post twice a week. And plus it gives you us a lot of content as well. So we'll see. I definitely want to try to post twice a week and I definitely think I can make that happen. And then next month we can see, do I want to keep doing it like that? Or do I want to change things? Okay, and then my last goal that I wrote on here is to post on TikTok at least five times a week. I love my TikTok. I haven't slacked in a little bit. I definitely post on TikTok still quite often, but I've been kind of slacking. I definitely should be posting more than I do. So I think I want to make it a goal to start posting a lot more on TikTok. It's kind of where everything started. So I definitely want to make sure to keep that going. But yeah, so that those are my goals for November. I might add to the list, but these are just some of the goals that I know for sure, like right now, that I really want to focus on and try hitting. 
Yeah, I'm excited to see. Who thinks down below that I can actually hit all these goals? Comment down below and let me know your guys' goals. Let me know your top three goals for November. I'd love to hear them all. I do look at all your guys' comments, by the way, just so you know, and I try to respond to as many as I possibly can. So let me know your top three goals for November. Okay, guys, this is my first time trying to screen record my screen a different way than I tried before. I eventually will find the perfect way to do it, but yeah, bear with me. I think you guys can probably see everything on the side of my screen, but hopefully that's fine. So let's just pay attention to the budgeting. I don't really love this budgeting spreadsheet, but I want to try using a spreadsheet instead of using what I tried using before because I didn't like it. So if I like doing a spreadsheet, then I'm probably going to make my own budgeting spreadsheet and it'll look a lot better next time. But let's just go with this one. So I'm going to do things a little bit different, but since I never budget, I'm just going to kind of start from what's in my bank. And then next month, we'll start just doing the income that actually came in that month instead of doing all my money. But we're going to just try to kind of budget everything right now. So we right now, I have third, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm just going to tell you guys the truth. $13,452.98 right now in my bank account. I know I have more money coming from October that isn't in my bank account yet. So I actually have more money. I should be over $14,000, no problem, before October's over. But we're just starting it right now. So anyways, we're at $13,452.98, but we should probably be at around $14,000. So I'm just going to put that there. Okay, let's start with rent. The rent is always due at the first of the month. So it's going to be due November 1st. My rent is like, I think it's like 1,560 or 1,550. So we're just going to put $1,600 and it is going to be a rent. Yeah, we'll just put $1,600. Electricity. I don't even know when that's due, but for budget, I don't even know how much it's going to cost me. Hopefully less than 200. So I'm just going to put $200 for that. Phone bill. I got a brand new phone, so the first bill is always going to be the most expensive. So I don't really know how much it's going to cost me. I hope no more than two. I'm going to put two fifty because it's going. Like I said, it's the first phone bill, so it might be kind of pricey. So let's put 250 for the first phone bill. So yeah, we have rent, electricity, phone bill. Let's do groceries. So this is this is going to be kind of high because my grocery bill is pretty high. But for the whole month. Well, I don't really go grocery shopping that much. Let's say, I probably go twice a month, to be honest. I spend about $200 each time. So it's about 400 bucks. It might be a little bit under that, but that's pretty accurate, $400 for groceries. Obviously, I have like all my subscriptions, but I don't even know how much that all costs. I really should have added all this up before I got, before I started recording. <laughs> because I know I have my stand store, but I feel like my referrals actually pay, for that. I believe my referrals actually pay for my stand store for me. My stand store is 30 bucks. I started using Repurpose, which was another 30 bucks, which I might stop using, but I do use Repurpose at IO. I think that's around $30 as well. I think that's 60. Oh, and then I also bought another subscription, but I think I paid for the whole year for that. I think it was 60 for the whole year. So 60, my Netflix and Hulu. Let's say we have like $150 in subscriptions, but I honestly think it might be less than that. I just don't want to. I'd rather overestimate than underestimate. Let me actually go through my bank transactions and see what I spend money on. A lot on Amazon and going out to eat. That's definitely my guilty pleasure, I'll say, is going out to eat. That's one thing that me and my partner absolutely love to do, so I'm never going to take that away from us because we do love it. So that's where things get more expensive. Oh, yeah, I actually... Oh yeah, I actually purchased a store. I don't think I had to pay for that for like three months, but just in case, that was like 20 bucks. We'll still keep that with the 150, the subscriptions for the Shopify store. I did pay for that though. When I, I'll probably, what I'll probably do is I'll probably actually end up adding up all my subscriptions and then going into here and kind of fixing it. But I was kind of giving you guys a raw idea of what most things are when I budget. Oh yeah, the dentist. I spent a lot of money at the dentist last month. Well, this month, but you know, I'm doing this for November, but for October, I just spend quite a bit of money at the dentist. So we'll be spending more money. That's true. Actually, I'm going to be spending money at the dentist this month too. Let's just say like budget $500. Yeah. Credit cards. So my credit card, let's see. I just paid off my credit card and I already owe a lot of money again. So I do spend a lot of money on my credit card because I, have, I usually use my Apple credit card 
but I get points for every purchase that I basically do on my credit card. So I like to be able to spend things on my credit card so I actually get money back. Yeah, I said points. I get money back, not points. So my Apple card, I get money back. So I like to spend everything on my credit card, get money back, and then pay it off so I don't end up having to owe any fees. That way I actually basically make money to spend money. So let's see, what's my Apple credit card at right now? Oh my gosh. It's already, I just paid it off and it's already at $911, 81 cents. I don't owe anything right now because I just paid it off, so I won't owe anything until like November, December. I mean, end of November, December. But just in case, let's just put, let's budget $1,500 on there. Hopefully we don't spend more than that. So I need to start watching what I'm spending on there right now. Okay, so then next we have going out to eat, going out. So when I say going out, I mean like going out to eat or going to the movie. So there's a really amazing movie theater here that got introduced to that I'm now obsessed with, but it is expensive. It's really cool though. So it's a movie theater that has these special seats for couples. And so it has like these really nice like recliners and it comes with your own blanket too. So you have a recliner, you can recline all the way back. You get to have a blanket to cuddle up with. It's right next to your partner. And then they also have a table there and you actually get to like, they have like waiters or waitresses come in and take your order and you get to order like a nice dinner or appetizers and drinks to enjoy while you're watching the movie. It's like my favorite thing now, but it's pretty expensive. So that and like going out to dinners and lunches and sometimes like brunches are my favorite thing. So that's what we probably spend the most amount of money on aside from bills, that and vacations. So let me see, going out, I, I wanna try to not spend so much money anymore. I'm gonna put $500 for the month for that and see if we can stick to that price or not. Yeah, I'm at $5,000. Holy crap. How am I at $5,100 already? Well, this is eye-opening to me. Let me put taxes here. I need to I need to put away some money for taxes. I should probably put away like three thousand dollars for taxes. I'm not even kidding. I should probably go take out like three thousand dollars from my bank. I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna put in three thousand dollars to put in savings for my taxes, and then I need to start saving for vacation. So I know that we want to go to Hawaii. So maybe I should set aside like. See if I can make an extra thousand for that too. A thousand dollars. No, I don't need to set aside a thousand dollars. Let's set aside six hundred dollars for Hawaii. I need to like put that in like a separate envelope. I like all those envelopes here. That's basically what I probably should be using the envelope section for, but it's fine. So taxes, Hawaii. And then I really should start like an emergency fund. I don't have one. I know that's really bad, guys. I don't know. Like, well, let's put five hundred dollars away in our emergency fund. I also put away a little bit of money sometimes for stocks, but I use like a separate app for that. And I don't do it all the time. I just kind of do it once in a while. And it, the market's just so bad right now. So I'm not going to take any money out of my stocks, even though the market's bad. I'm going to let it stay in there for like three years and see what it accumulates to. But I don't know if I really want to put any money in there right now. I really should be having like a 401k and stuff too. I need to look into this. That should go on my goal list too, to look into like 401k and stuff. But right now I'm just going to put Taxes Hawaii and Emergency Fund for now. And then I'm going to look more into like saving stuff because I do want to get better with that for my future. I do want to put away money, you know what, for my agency that I'm going to build. I do. So let me put like, I should put like $3,000 away for my agency too. So I can make sure I have money to like pay the people that I want to bring on and stuff. Oh, okay. So I basically got everything budgeted. That actually was a lot easier than what I thought it would be. So I think next month it's going to be even better. I think when we budget for December, it'll be perfect, which will be awesome. Because that, mean that means I'll be able to really budget like super well for next year. So I'll be happy about that. So this is what I did. But like I said, starting next month, I actually want to budget monthly. Meaning I want to budget off the income I make that month and not just keep budgeting out of like my bank account. I want to budget every month and see how I can do that. But for now, I just kind of budgeted everything. So I haven't, cause I just need to get everything budgeted. So I put in my income at the $13,452.98. And then we just kind of got everything kind of budgeted out. So I put in my, you know, my rent, electricity, phone bill, grocery, subscriptions, dentist, credit cards, going out and shopping, which to my surprise came up to $5,350. I did not realize that's the kind of money I was spending every month. So that's a big eye opener for me right there. <laughs> like, wow. And then for savings, I have, I want to put away 3000 for taxes. 
I want to put away 600 for Hawaii for next year. I want to put away 500 for my emergency fund, 3000 towards my agency, and then 1000 towards just regular savings. And that total takes me to almost $13,450. We have a, we have like $2.98 left over. So we're basically at the whole amount being budgeted. But yeah, so that's what my budget looks like, guys. But I can't wait to start doing it the right way. But this is a pretty nice because this definitely opens my eyes. Like, that's crazy to me. I'm spending that much money. I really need to make sure I'm bringing in a good amount of income starting next month again. Because, yeah, I'm spending too much money. I do not want to run through all my money. This is actually the lowest my biggest, my big account has been in a long time. So that's eye-opening as well. I normally don't let my big account get under 15000 So that's a little nerve-wracking to me. But things happen. It's okay. I've been, things have been happening. So we're going to get back on track. We're going to get better. I would love for my big account to be $20,000 at the lowest. That would be super nice to have. But, um, yeah, and I also would love to have a separate savings of $20,000 because that's what I should be putting in my savings. I really want to start investing eventually. That's what I'm going to do, actually. Instead of being savings, I'm going to put investing right here because I really want to invest in, like, real estate. That's something I really want to do. So I should really start putting more savings towards that. And I would ideally love to have, like, $20,000 for that. So that would be really nice to have towards that, you know, to be able to put towards like a loan or whatever, however I want to do that. So we got to start doing things a smart way. Like I want to start getting on track now. That way for next year, I can start taking things even more serious. This is the first year where I've started making this kind of income, which is a lot for me. So, which I'm so happy about and so proud of myself for. So next year, I'd like to make sure I get even, I get, you know, more smart about everything. And I start actually having all my savings and I start getting prepared for my, you know, investing and making sure I'm doing better with my taxes and all that stuff. I want to do things, you know, better. Hey guys, I forgot to end this video. So I just want to hop in really quick while I'm working. It's while I'm wearing my blue light glasses. And to say thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. There are a ton more YouTube videos coming. I plan on posting to YouTube twice a week. So you're going to have so much information. So make sure you hit the subscribe button if you have found any value in this video and your interest in content creation, UGC, and all that stuff because then you'll find a lot more value in my past videos and upcoming videos. But yeah, you guys, thank you guys so much for watching and you guys all have a great day.